It didn't say two one. Oh yeah, it, it didn't. <laughs> but it's recording. Okay. Oh, I discovered this. Ooh, what's let me, that? Let me, let me do this. Uh... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> And it has <laughs> laughing. That's awesome. <laughs> if you're like a lone podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start the show. Yeah, we got fans. <laughs> oh, that one goes on for like 40 seconds. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of fans. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Crowbar Kernel Panic, the podcast at the intersection of Linux and gaming. This is episode 39, and this episode is pre-recorded and will be released on YouTube, on iTunes, and on podcast apps. Please like, subscribe, and content however you prefer to enjoy the show. We don't make you choose. You can listen. You can watch. You can do both. You can do neither, but whatever you do, please, <laughs> please hit don't do like, neither. subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> pick one. Just pick one of them, all right? <laughs> um, this episode, we are going to be talking about, we've got some, we've actually got some Linux news this episode. Um, it's not going to be like last week where we just banter for an hour, although those are <laughs> the best episodes. Um, but then we're going to close out the show with a little bit of update on our game dev uh our game dev progress, um, our game dev <laughs> update. I don't know what to call this segment, but this is uh, this is what we've learned this week in game development. Um, For me, it's just my game dev knowledge base because I haven't really done anything. <laughs> <laughs> I I um I wanted to work this weekend on some game development. I was thinking I want to start like a where I, I make a plan through the week of what I want to mm. get done on the weekend. I didn't do I didn't touch anything yep. this entire weekend. I feel but, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can send us an email at crowbarkernelpanic at pm.me uh, you can join us on discord I have a link to the discord in the show notes uh, we have people joining there and it's always it's always really interesting whenever someone joins discord and says they listen to the show I'm like whoa yeah <laughs> somebody really listens to this thing this is wild so and uh, they went through the trouble to go look us up on and discord they went, yeah that's actually now that you say it like that it actually is like really flattering thank yeah. you very much and Please. now they're not going to know who we are because Discord's changing their whole naming convention. So I'm like, what the heck? So what's the deal with that? What's the Discord naming convention change? So like, you know how it's yet. so it's you know how it's like your name, your username, and then um, hashtag a uh, number. Well, now it's going to go like everybody else, where it's like at whoever at you know your name, okay. whatever, like that, like Twitter is. They still have to have the number or whatever. You got me. I have no idea how they're going to get rid of that because technically I have two Discord accounts because I locked myself out of my first one I because that. I had yeah. two factor. <laughs> <laughs> screwed myself on that. But <laughs> yeah, so I have no idea. I don't know how they're going to do it, but uh, yeah, it's they're like doing that. Whenever I was, I remember when World of Warcraft switched from like any you could just have any name to mm-hmm. like you had to use an email. Somehow this feels like that for me. Like it's some, <laughs> we're no longer anonymous on Discord. Where yep. I don't, I don't know we ever truly were before. I don't know. Actually, actually, Discord is pretty. I think is pretty anonymous, right? If as long as you don't, it depends on the email you use setting up the account. I think. I would think so. Yeah, it's like the only thing that links back to you. All right. Anyway, let's uh, go over some news items before we break into the banter. Um, first up here. Oh, this one's kind of a. Kind of a sad one. Um, it is. Over here on Ben Cotton's blog, uh, we can read it straight from the man himself. Um, former Fedora program manager has been let go from Red Hat um, on April 24th, 2023. Red Hat was laying off 4% of their global staff, and unfortunately, Ben was one of the 4%. Now, in this yep. in this blog post... He, I, I kind of got the indication that I don't really know how they, I don't know that anybody yet knows how they chose the people that they chose. I wonder if this was like one of those cases where they just kind of 
randomly picked people yeah. of a of a certain like range of job roles, and and it just happened I mean, to land it, on Ben. It, it could be. I mean, you know, all these companies are starting to you know thin the herd because they, you know they've been spending too much money. And not that he wasn't worth it. I'm not saying that. I'm just yeah. saying these guys are just being let go, and um, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand why they would do this to him other than the fact that I think IBM has a lot of pull now. And mm-hmm. I know maybe they didn't have anything to do with CentOS because, of course, that seemed like it was kind of like a transitioning thing between when they got taken over by IBM. I think Red yeah. Hat was already planning that. But this definitely seems like it's an IBM kind of derivative uh, derivative move, you know. Yeah, Yeah, I know. That's the fear, right? Is that this all spurs from the IBM takeover. So he says, uh, while I won't be contributing as the Fedora program manager anymore, I was a Fedora contributor long before I joined Red Hat, and I'm not letting them take that away from me. I'll, I'll still be around Fedora in ways that spark joy, although perhaps not as much at, at first as I let my wounds heal. Um, so it's uh it's interesting to see that he's still interested in the Fedora community um even after this uh life event. I can't imagine how I would feel in this scenario. Yeah, I you got me. I, I'd be that'd be I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I could see so this is just speculation. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody at Red Hat. Uh they're they're now owned by IBM. They're trying to signal to you know, certain shareholders and investors. Right, right. Um, I could see how a role like a community uh, or a, a, a program manager mm-hmm. for a, a Fedora, like not right. even specifically to the product that, you know, I, I doubt many shareholders and investors are like extremely interested in Fedora. Or know? even know about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if they're smart investors, they probably are aware. And... and and this is really generalizing here. There's probably people that invest because they believe in uh, projects like Fedora, but right. you, but that that's you know obviously that's not the the mm-hmm. sum total. And there's many that that don't and are going to be p- completely oblivious. And I could see how this role would be one of the roles that would fall into the hat that they're going to then pull four four percent of from. Yeah. Um, that being said, I think that it's. Uh, it's a real shame because uh, Fedora is important to the success of Red Hat. Oh, yeah, and 100%. we all see that from the open source community. And even in this article here, uh, Ben points out that there's still many people within Red Hat that believe in the importance of Fedora as a yeah. project. So that's the, that's the thing. This. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I don't know where it came from. If it came from Red Hat, then I'd be kind of – I'd be even more, more like – why if red hat was the culprit of you know letting these people go but if ibm was the culprit then i'd be like well that's a consequence of them owning red hat you know so i don't know i i put more a more stock in the red hat mindset than i do the ibm mindset if you if you know what i mean oh yeah yeah for sure i know exactly what you mean um so he says uh ben says he seems to have faith in uh and the Fedora community and its progress going forward. He says, uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. No doubt there are gaps in what I've left for my successors. However, my goal is that in a few months, nobody will notice that I'm gone. That's my measure of success. The only reason I've been successful in my role is because of the work done by my predecessors. And then he, he lists off uh, some of his predecessors. So, I don't know. I I, yeah. I definitely, you know, I feel for Ben being in this situation, but yep. I'm also cer- certain that he will have an easy time finding another job somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Or no matter what you think about yep. this situation, it was because of money. It was because oh, yeah. they were trying to signal something to someone that they were cutting these people and yep. that there was a value there for it. It wasn't just because they didn't like them. No, 100%. Um, no. Yeah. I don't think many people... You know, fire people that have been working you know, for that long in their company for that like reason. This is like hard to cover because, in a lot of ways, the Linux community is so anti corporate, you know? Yep. And, yep. and that's actually what I like about it. It is the like punk rock of the IT <laughs> world. And um, 
So I don't know. It just you just hate to see something like this, and I really don't know where I sit on it, except for that I think most, I think at my heart of hearts, it sucks, and yep. uh, it definitely. I mean, Red Hat already was sort of the corporate enterprise of of the Linux world, which, yep. but it's also kind of like a like a like a necessary evil too, because it, it also contributes to a lot of its success. So yeah, uh, and the good thing for me. I think is that even if let's say Red Hat goes away, whatever you want to call it, I, I believe yeah. I believe Never Fedora will. would continue because I think there's enough people out there that will want to actually continue it. Fedora could be Fedora could branch off away from Red Hat and become its own thing. If tomorrow oh, yeah. Red Hat decided we're no longer going to contribute to the Fedora project, which would be absurd. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because who's Not contributing? <laughs> who's contributing to who here? Actually, but it would be absurd. But if that were to happen, if they said we want to sever ties, like Fedora would be a new project tomorrow, the very yep. next day. Yep. Um, it would continue. There's no, it's there's no stopping it. Nope. All right. What else we got here? Oh, this <laughs> next story. I I. I, I heard about listening to um, Linux Action News, actually. It's not Linux. It's not specifically Linux uh, related. But I heard them talk about it, and then it kind of it touched a special place in my heart because it actually <laughs> does. It actually affects me directly, um, although I can't afford a Model S or a Model X. But um, so uh, they reported on Tesla owners are suing... Um, over an impact of a software update to their EV battery. So this is Tesla Model X, Tesla Model S owners who received an update that downgraded the performance of the the range (laughs) specifically of their battery in their Tesla. So uh, after this software update where before they were getting like 210 miles range based on their battery, um, now they're they're one guy said he was getting like less than a hundred miles. I think he said he was getting Whoa. like eighty miles. And <laughs> oh man, there has been no physical change crazy. to his battery. Yeah, so like there's there's been no physical change to his battery. There's no reason to believe that like overnight he killed all these cells. It was all due <laughs> to the software upgrade. Oh come on, um, it wasn't a lightning strike. I, I mean, I thought it was he, obviously a lightning strike. He, he parked over like a cartoonishly large magnet or something. Oh was, right, I forgot about those. You got to watch out for those. <laughs> There's a big ac- <laughs> big Acme magnet, like a car- like, <laughs> yeah. like it's red with silver on the tips. Wiley he Coyote's loves- <laughs> holding it on one side. <laughs> um. Yeah, just overnight. And I I can attest to this type of this type of thing happening because I specifically so I have a uh I have a 2020 Model 3 and I specifically bought I intentionally bought a used Tesla uh cuz I didn't I didn't want to buy a new one and I Oh, um, come on, I, Mr. Moneybags. <laughs> <laughs> I I intentionally bought the year that I did. I wanted 2020 or earlier because um, they have they have radar. They have a physical radar right. on the car, and they use that for its autopilot feature. And I knew that they had stopped using the radar in the full self driving, which but, is so weird to me. Why would they stop making? I don't know. Putting the radar in the cars. So they quit putting it in the car because they got so good at the uh, technology of just using the cameras. So oh. they can detect how far away things are just via the camera. They don't necessarily need the radar anymore. (laughs) Yeah, it's concerning. Yeah, I trust. I actually trust the radar more than I do the camera. And if the car has both, I should be able to use both. So that's why I bought a 2020. (laughs) That's why I bought a 2020. Because when I bought it, I could. I could use both. Right, right. And again, that's specifically part of the reason I purchased that car. Um, and And then not long after I had it, I've only had it a year now. And I would say four or five months into me owning it, I kept seeing people saying on Reddit, "Oh, I get this phantom braking. I'll just be driving on the road, and all of a sudden, I was just slam on brakes, and I and I and it never happened to me. Never once happened to me. Hmm. And I just thought these people are crazy. Like they're they're <laughs> noticing some weird thing, and it's they're you know they're it's fud naysayers. Tesla lo- Tesla owners love saying fud. It's fud totally. <laughs> and 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 then I got a software update, and I started getting phantom braking." Oh. driving down the road and just all of a sudden the car will just stop. I mean, on 85, you know, and the car will just stop. And then 
I looked into it and it turns out it was because the upgrade or the update disabled the radar in the car. That's so just, now I'm driving uh, around with a radar in my car that does nothing. It's only apparently using it does something. It breaks yeah, <laughs> for it, nothing. It, 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 it does nothing now. Before it was keeping me from from breaking for no dang reason on the interstate. <laughs> Apparently, so, the, my car the, was want to do that. The radar was keeping it from doing that. So how have they figured out why the cars are randomly breaking like that? No, no idea. No, that's no idea. so bizarre. <laughs> there must be something that's that's connected to the radar that is now just going oh, haywire no. because... No, no, no. The phantom breaking is caused by the cameras. So the, the cameras, for some oh. reason, you know, it'll be okay. like... Whenever I get phantom breaking, I can usually tell kind of why it happened. Like, it'll be like a shadow that goes across the whole road, and the car for a second will be like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's that? You know, and, right. then, and then it'll it'll start going again. Um, but radar never did that. It never did that on radar. Yeah, because it didn't even know the shadow was there because it's yeah, radar. It was just it was just scanning <laughs> for other cars. Yeah. And so they, they started using the cameras, and then they said, well, if we're using camera anyway, we don't even need to put radar in the next models. So they quit putting them in there. So there's cars between, like, 2021... And now that that don't have anything, they're just using cameras. But right. But now going in, my understanding is, and I'd have to research this closer. But I, my understanding is, the new cars that that are going to have the the like the new version of full self driving. Which, by the way, full self driving works. <laughs> It works great in certain scenarios, and they're still promising that they're going to flesh it out. It's going to work mm-hmm. everywhere. I think it's getting as good as it's ever going to get. Like, and I'm not saying it's bad, <laughs> but it's. I don't think it's ever going to get to the point where we're just going to like close our eyes and let our cars drive us somewhere. Like, it's it's. Uh, I don't. Think I can't we're even ever imagine that. Get there. <laughs> oh, anyway, so uh, there. But for that to work, for the full self driving to work as well as they want it to, there's mm-hmm. like a new version of radar. That they're planning on they're planning on putting in cars, and so like yes. they're going to go back to radar. <laughs> um, <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> so anyway, all this to say that like my only option as a Tesla owner, if I wanted to go back to radar, which I don't, I'm just living with it. I don't use the self driving features anyway. I use Lane Assist, which they call autopilot, but it's just Lane Assist. My wife has a <laughs> my wife has a Nissan Leaf. It does the same thing. They don't call it autopilot. It's just called Lane Assist. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, you should just like, get a Nissan leaf sticker and put it on the back of your car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put Tesla stickers on my wife's leaf. Oh, Hey, um, there you go. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, the, my only option is to either go to like this third party, um, uh, EV company that will roll back the updates. They're going like, to jailbreak my Tesla <laughs> and like permanently <laughs> stick it on the last update you had. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what these model, that's what one of these, uh, model S guys did was they, that, they went to this other company and had them also roll it back. S- that also, sounds that also dangerous. sounds scary. Yeah. Because <laughs> there, there are updates that Tesla releases for safety reasons that are good things. You know, they're not all bad things. So like, I don't want to lose all updates. I just wish that specifically this feature, especially if it's connected to a piece of hardware that is on my car, I could like turn on or off or I like, uh, yeah, I know. I, I, I get you. But like, so this is, this is my scenario is like, if I did that, I would be like, can you also disable the Wi-Fi and the cell, you know, signal that comes out of this yeah. car? Because I don't want someone hacking into my car when there's the next, you know, <laughs> software bug that they yeah. figure out how to control my car with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely so. Like my feeling on it is, I, 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 it, it, I love my, I love my Model Three, but I think that the right to repair, and I think yeah. that the software manageability mm-hmm. like these are things that like basically as a owner i have no control over yeah and it's, that's just crazy and i and i totally see i totally see where like something needs to evolve and like you know something needs to become a little more open here yep the technology is moving faster than the like i don't know the licensing or the law whatever you want to call it you know around it so yeah, yeah i know exactly what you're talking about with that so RPG Maker Unite has released uh, to the specifically to the Unity Asset Store. They have a Steam page, yeah. but it's not released to Steam yet. At least I haven't checked it in a few days. But last time I checked, it was not yeah, released I, to Steam. I, I don't think it is either yet. And I'm confused how they'll even do that. 
I don't so, know that. I don't know either. I, like maybe you have to like download um, Unity and then it'll you can install it or I don't know. Yeah, they'd have to like give you some kind of instructions. Like it doesn't work. On or its maybe own. it'll download RPG Maker. And then it'll download Unity in a in a, like another package, and then yeah, something like they, that. Yeah, I don't know how they work all that out, but anyway, it's an add on for Unity, so that's the issue, right? If you if you buy it from Steam, you're going to get the add on, and not necessarily Unity. Um, but you know, they could. I don't know. I could foresee them having a uh, a community help desk nightmare where people are like. They don't understand that when they buy it and they're writing in, you mean I got to buy Unity and like Unity's free and yeah, anyway. Yeah, it it um, sounds like it's going to be crazy, but that aside, it looks pretty freaking cool. (laughs) And it's it's in the Unity Asset Store, which makes complete sense to me because people looking for it here already understand this, Um, but it's an add-on for Unity. It puts RPG Maker in Unity. It's um, really cool, so I can play some of this here without audio. Um, it looks just like RPG Maker, only you have better resolution support. You have all of the Unity, um, like, you know, basically it is just a layer on top of Unity. So you have all the features of Unity that you could work into this. Um, and also, there was, you know, you and I discussed before how we didn't like how layering worked in some versions of RPG Maker. Right. None of that will matter here. Nope. Your tile sets are like, you can... Have, it's unlimited basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is this is all of the features of all of the RPG makers. Yeah. Um not literally, but it's all the good features. Right. And the like the tile set thing, you can you can just like put individual tile, you can build your own tile set basically. Mhm. With as many layers. Um yep. so it's if you're an RPG maker user, I think you might want to uh, start looking into learning a little bit of Unity. You wouldn't have to learn very much either because basically once you install this, you are mostly using RPG Maker. Unity yeah, yeah, it's just the just the engine. I don't even know I don't even know if you really want to go too far under the hood. I know they said something about C sharp you can use because that's what Unity uses. Yeah, um, that's true. So all right, so I know that back whenever I was looking into RPG Maker way back in the day it was like Java based, and then at yeah, some point yeah, yeah. it changed. Did it change to C sharp? So, no, it was so like I Ruby think, at some point. It was yeah, like yeah. Ruby. It started off as like Ruby, I think, some somewhere, and then That's RPG. What it was. Yeah, RPG yeah. Maker MV. Then it started JavaScript. Gotcha. And then okay. and then the next one VX or XV whatever. That one was JavaScript, and now this one's based on Unity, which Unity is uses C sharp. So, Ooh, yeah, did you see? Did cool. you see the star rating on this already, though? Ooh, Ooh. that's it's not good. I mean, it's only fifty-one, rating. but it's only it's only got two stars. Where's the comments? Let's look at some comments. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How does this make any sense, dude? How does this make any sense? Fifty-one reviews, two stars, three hundred and four hearts. Okay, I know how this <laughs> makes sense. I know how this okay. makes sense. Okay, makes so, sense. Make it sense to me. You can hard it without <laughs> trying it. You can hard it without purchasing it. Oh. And, and I'll tell you what I do is whenever I'm working on a concept for a game and I think I need, I'm, I'm going to need like, I'm trying to an think An asset something. or whatever. Yeah, like right now I'm looking for an asset for, I want third person hands for a game I'm working on. Ah, okay. Uh, for like a first person hands. Yeah, yeah, and, gotcha. And so I st- I favored it a bunch of hands that I might purchase the asset for. Um, mm, right. Just to, it's the way to bookmark them. So I'm yeah, sure kind of come back to them later. Matter of fact, I probably have favorited this because I wanted to come back to it later in case we talked about it on the show. <laughs> um, but then the actual so you're people part that of the used problem. it, <laughs> 51 people, which I thought the numbers would be higher than that, 51 and 304. Um, fifty-one people have given it, or had it's resulted in two stars. Where are the comments? So this is this is where like maybe it's my fault for not understanding Unity, but like so this is okay. basically an add-on to. Oh no, <laughs> go ahead. I see that. <laughs> I, I I saw the I saw the I saw the comments. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna so have trouble is, reading the comments. <laughs> It's going to be difficult. <laughs> so so this is an add-on to Unity, okay, yeah. that basically turns it into RPG Maker. So why couldn't someone just, like, manipulate Unity to become this? Like, yeah, not you, this 
exactly, but like something similar to this. You could build anything you could build in RPG Maker, you could definitely build in Godot or Unity. Or right, Unreal, and that's what I'm, I'm sure. confused I don't know anything about on. Unreal, but you could. All this is doing is it's making it so that you don't have to learn how. <laughs> you just you can just install this, and then basically you have RPG Maker. Um, right, and if you were right. going and and based on uh, my experimenting with Godot, if you were going to do that, if you said, "Well, I don't want to buy RPG Maker, I just want to learn how to make a similar RPG in yeah, another right. engine," Godot is well equipped. It well equipped to handle that. Okay, interesting. I would, I, right. would, I think for a two D game, I would probably recommend Godot over okay. Unity specifically for that. The downside is that Godot only builds for Linux, Windows, and Steam Deck. You you can't build for like Android, which you ah. can for Unity, which I care and could, you couldn't care you less can, about. RPG Maker can also. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, or I think, no, maybe it can't. Maybe that's an advantage of Unite over, I don't know. I, that, do I don't know. Can you build for Android from yes. RPG Maker? You can. Yeah. Okay. As far as so I know, you can. Um, the pipeline. So I notice here is, it's, it's kind of rare for universal, uh, universal render pipeline, um, and HDRP, the, uh, HD render pipeline to be available, not to be available. It only, it's only using the built in pipeline. Most yeah. Unity users are not going to care. I didn't know what any of that meant until like a week ago. And I've been <laughs> using Unity. I would just pick whichever one was whichever one was already installed on my computer. That's the one I used. I didn't know the difference. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I only knew about that stuff after I started looking into this because the videos on this were talking about that. And they're like, yeah. why they didn't build it for the other two is beyond them because they're the future, basically. I think that you want to target... URP. That's the right, game URP. I'm working on right now. I'm targeting URP. Yeah. Because I feel like if I were doing something that was like Ultra HD, I wouldn't be using Unity. And uh, and the built-in is, I think, I think everybody's kind of moving to URP. Right. Let's see if we can read some of these comments. I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to see what the reviews are. Let's look at, let's look at, uh, oh man, let's look at. Oh boy. One star <laughs> reviews first. That's, we'll find one in English. <laughs> How can I get refund? <laughs> Thank you, Reckless Gaming. Thank you. Editor doesn't even open and the game doesn't load. Ooh, yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I found the problem with that one. <clears throat> There's Mac in the word of, uh, in the, in the uh, name of that one. Oh, yeah. It doesn't work on Mac. Oh, they probably have not done much testing there. I'm so <laughs> sorry, Craig. Mac users are similar to Windows or similar to Linux users in that we're we're kind of used to things <laughs> not working first try. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, this guy, it doesn't even work. Uh, I literally cannot transfer my character to another map, making this literally unusable for anything longer than two minute long games. It's super awkward to do transfers in the first place. You enter, you enter into this weird setting up phase and have to Guess work where you want to transfer Ooh, on the new map. That sounds bad. Since you does that make sense to you? Because I don't recognize what he's talking about. Yeah. So like so like let's say you want to go inside of a house. So like you put your you put yeah. your your transition block um on the door and you run into the door. It, you want it to come on the other side of that door. Well, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure what he's exactly talking about, but I would imagine yeah. it's like not easy to get that that where you're going to be coming into like into the house it's must be weird to place the tile where you're going to like pop up oh he says okay i see what he's saying uh well, again we don't have any idea if this guy's accurate he could he could have messed something up on his end but yep. he says that you have to pick the coordinates based on your current map not the one that your character will transfer yeah there into. you go yeah, that's that seems- that's a problem. I can totally see that from using using uh, MV. Yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Not even Pixel Game Maker, man. This guy wrote a long one. Whoa, um, that is a long one. Yeah, <laughs> but is, uh... but things got worse. What was that? It said oh, sorry, things got worse on Android. <laughs> oh yeah, but things got worse on Android. <laughs> Holy cow! Um, let's look at uh, there's there's four five star reviews. I gotta tell you, I wouldn't. I I got. I wouldn't buy this. I wouldn't buy this. Not um, yet. 
I, 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 I hate it for you. I know you were excited for this to come out. No, 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 no. I, I was excited for this to come out, but I was not expecting it to be like flawless because pretty much anything that comes out nowadays, except for Nintendo games, yeah, are not flawless. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so uh, of the five star reviews, one of them we can't read. Use this patch or wait. Oh, there is uh-huh. a patch that greatly reduces the export times and optimizes the game once built. So it sounds like that wouldn't fix. I think it was Craig. I can't remember the guy's name. It wouldn't fix the last guy's problem. Mm, probably not. Um, but uh, that might fix a few other people. Um, it totally works. Export times go from 50 minutes to 15 minutes. So apparently this guy must be able to make games and export them because if he's exporting he them, he must the be able to, to make end. them. Yeah, he made right. it all the way to the end of the process. <laughs> Unless he literally just loaded a map and then exported it. <laughs> Which is way farther than I've made it so far. I have no idea how Unity export games have never made it that far. Um, let's see. Happy with it. Five, five star review, but the title wait, wait. is Happy With It. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Does that sound like a five star review? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> happy with it, you know? Uh, uh, I. <laughs> I played a lot of RPG and am very versatile at gaming, modding, and stuff, <laughs> but never tried any RPG Maker software before. Also, I never tried Unity. Uh, the learning curve is okay for me. Uh, um, just okay. Yeah. But five well, star reviews. Hey, our, our okay is where you want to be for a learning curve, you know? Um, <laughs> I just feel like happy is like five stars should be like, like, fantastic this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> um i bought it at a very the very first day after public launch i am happy with it and uh and want to thank the developers for it hereby i was wondering if i could work with the graphics stuff i was planning to do now i see there are all the features i need and more totally underrated software if you ask me five stars no doubt about it. Game changer <laughs> event. I gotta tell you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, but that one's definitely not a real person. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so as you were as you were reading that one, read the last paragraph of the one above it. Oh, the last this, paragraph. This this breaks the whole thing for me. The main selling point of this to me is the fact that it's on Unity. And you can use a you can use a lot of Unity advanced features to edit your game and use C sharp instead of Java. But if you have <laughs> no interest in Unity or C sharp, then I would just <laughs> stick with MV and MZ. <laughs> That just That's basically true. just ne- ne- that, negated all of his like stuff he said before. <laughs> I think this, you know what? I think this hits the nail on the head for me. I yep. know this is a five star yep. uh, review by Hell No 2015. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um, but um. the, the, uh, I think this hits the nail on the head for me why I'm not super interested in this because if yep. I wanted to make an RPG Maker game, I would just use RPG Maker. I nope. if it just it just seems like you're using it seems like you're using this like new experimental version of RPG mm-hmm. Maker and you're not using yep. any of the features of Unity. Yeah. And like this is where this is like where I'm like confused on is yeah, they wanted to build on top of Unity. I get that. But they're going from JavaScript to C sharp. It is like world's different it's not even the same thing at all yeah no <laughs> i would say at this point if you're good at one or the other then stick with that one 100 um, percent. yeah i kind of feel like c sharp's more relevant though if you're in the game 100 percent. yeah the, c sharp is Chris, definitely yeah it's definitely um, more relevant I, I don't i don't the only things i know about c sharp are from are, are from unity so i mean i'm not like an expert but i just basically me on, neither but I, i've used it a little bit now with making the text-based game and it, it's pretty nice actually i, yeah. I kind of like it i am a i am a total tutorial script kitty and um i can tell you that <laughs> i see c sharp way more than i see anything else um all right here's another great here's another great five-star review works fine <laughs> <laughs> works fine <laughs> works fine five stars <laughs> 
Oh, wait, but it's fast for him. Works fine and fast for me. Uh, <laughs> maybe the haters don't have enough resources or something. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Calling them out, man. Calling them out. <laughs> JV came out with a just upgrade your system man what's wrong with you get more ram <laughs> download more ram from the internet <gasps> <laughs> JV came out with the maybe the haters just don't have enough money um <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just amazing i didn't uh, i didn't expect this was going to be so much fun reading this I this guy this. deserves 5 stars <laughs> <laughs> But I have a standard dev box, and RPG Maker Unite works fine for me. Speed is good, etc. As for the asset, it's RPG Maker. So <laughs> a lot like the standalone, but in Unity. Yeah, I would say it's almost exactly like it's, standalone. Yeah, you took MV and MZ and put them into <laughs> Unity. That's exactly what I mean, you did. I mean, it is different. We're hating a little bit, but it is. Yeah. It's, but, but essentially... <laughs> I feel like if you're getting this asset, you want it to be almost exactly the same. So, I mean, I still think yeah. that like my criticism applies. Like you just, what you want is RPG maker in unity. Um, and my, and my question is why just use RPG maker? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Cause like, like even our, even our points before with the layer thing, MZ or uh, yeah, MZ or whatever it was. Yeah. Has, um, has layers. Mm -hmm. So like just yeah. use that one. Use I don't know. MZ. I don't. I don't know the advantage yet. I, I don't. Use, I, I use need... MZ. I think there is better resolution support, but I haven't. I have MV. Yeah, that's MZ. one thing. But like, it's an so. RPG Maker game. Who cares? Yeah, you're gonna. You're making it probably for a handheld device of some kind. All right. I, I think Jamie's real though. I think. I think Jamie's <laughs> yeah, a real guy. He feels. <laughs> he definitely feels, feels more real yeah. than the other guys. I've met a few Jamies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I didn't expect that one to be so much fun. Um, that was definitely fun. <laughs> oh, Valve is trying to improve big picture mode on Linux for NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about this article before the show, and I said I have never actually used big picture mode, um, but apparently it's a it's it's a mainstay in your house. Yep, yep. I uh, I use it on my laptop that I have hooked up to my TV. I just plug in my. Uh, dock to uh dock to my laptop then my dock to my tv um and uh yeah it, it works great i always i always love it because it just launches right up and you can use your controller instead of having to use a mouse keyboard um have yeah you, it's have you experienced any of the screen stutter and pixelation that they describe i don't think your I've laptop ever, is a is a uh it's a built-in nvidia graphics yeah yep 3060 yep yep no i i never i never experienced that um ever on any of the uh the um when it's full screen or anything like that e even even just playing you know putting the um regular client full screen and i never noticed anything like that hmm. um I the wonder. only <laughs> the only issue i've had at all was the other day i got on witcher 3 when it went full screen i had this one little glitch on the side of my screen that kept like just going crazy and i found out that it was my resolution but that's literally the only issue i've ever had hmm. so well anyway for those people out there that are having those issues <laughs> apparently valve is working on improving it uh, specifically for nvidia gpus um which uh you know goes to show that they are still even though the steam deck is out and they got everybody on their steam deck um they're still trying to improve for uh the non Steam Deck NVIDIA users. There's a well. lot of NVIDIA users that have Linux. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I know, I know, we switched away, but um, it's there's the big, there's a big, uh, there's a big swath of them. Regretting it every day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love my graphics card. It just is not like in Linux. Um, Agreed. <laughs> we're trying to get there. We're trying to get there. <laughs> Well, if I get my button gear and actually write a, write an actual bug report on this thing, and if it wasn't so hard to write the bug report because you actually have to like do these kernel switches and all this other crap, mm. I would do it. But it's it, <laughs> I just haven't had time. I, I think I'm going to try another Arch install now that there's been a few official releases. Um, you know, we've we're talking about kernel. our Arc, our Arc Intel Arc graphics cards, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
in, in, Intel has released some some changes, and uh, there's been new kernels. And yep. and I, I've I've tried I tried Fedora Rawhide, which is on uh, six point four RC two right now, and still the same issue with my my one my screen my right hand screen my second screen is just like basically uh, what would that be uh, six forty by four eighty or whatever, and it's yeah. just a little square on my screen, so. I also think I'm going yeah. to turn off uh, HDR on my monitor because right now it's set to like auto detect, and I think I just want to just cut it. Completely I hope that completely works because that's going to be yeah. that's going to be like the beginning of it getting better. You know what I'm saying? It's just my like, it'll work with my old monitor. It, it, right? Yeah, that's what you're saying. It'll it'll work with my single monitor too. No yeah. problem. Like I yeah. can play any game I want my single monitor, but my second monitor is so small it's not even worth using. I might as well just unplug it. Yeah. For those wondering, we didn't quit testing it. We just I didn't, every episode I didn't want to talk about the same thing, so we just quit yeah, talking about right. it. But we're still trying to uh, get those minor issues to work out on some version of Linux. And when they do, we will have a celebration episode. Where we'll describe every hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're, I'm, out I'm there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for the day that like I just load up. <laughs> One one distro, whatever yeah. it may be, and I just have both my screens working, and the games work great. Like if if I could stand having one screen and not worrying about my second screen, it would be fine. I, I get the best support on Ubuntu with Wayland. That's that's what works the the best for. Wow, me. interesting. But, but it's still not well enough that I. Yeah, they did. They did recently it. release a second driver update. For Ubuntu, like a back, whatever I don't know what you call that. Back I see. Port. I don't think I've tried that yet either. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I need to try that, and I need to try uh, just to arch install. And that's what's that's what's not to continue on this, but that's what's nice about Ubuntu with with Intel is they actually do build for it. So yeah, like you don't have to wait for the kernel update. Yeah, I know. That's uh, yeah, I know. That's that's for a long time. That's why I told people I used Ubuntu. I mean, like years ago. I, I just everything was like made for that kind of first. Like if they did Linux support, yeah. they would make sure it worked on Ubuntu twenty oh four or whatever. And then Right, right, exactly. And so that was like my RTS for a long time. Going back to Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back, baby. They got hey, Fedora fired Ben. And uh Yeah, right, yeah. We gotta well, we gotta yeah. Outrage. I don't wanna put I don't wanna put that on Fedora actually. <laughs> oh right, right, yeah, sorry. Sorry Let me back that up. <laughs> <laughs> IBM slash Red Hat, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was, I just thought this was kind of a funny story. And uh, we didn't really talk about the original, uh, the original response. But uh, Roblox at one point had said that they were not interested in supporting wine. And uh, as a matter of fact, there was like a open detection that they were like looking to see if you were running wine. Yeah. Um as part of their like anti cheat software. And um well now it seems like they may have uh they made a response where I think they may be rolling that back a little bit. Um and they're saying that they may actually support uh they, they will they won't officially support wine. Right. But that they want to make their they, they hope that their game is is runnable and playable on wine and proton. And I think that uh, this is a response <laughs> to all of the uh, all the Steam Decks that are out there now. People yep. are, I hear people talking about Steam Deck that is in no that they're like completely outside, the, not even close to the Linux community. Yep. Um, like yep. podcasts I listen to that are not tech related whatsoever, and they're all sitting, uh, you know, at a desk with their Macs in front of them. And they, you know, talk about how great their Steam Deck is, you know. And they don't even know it's running Linux, probably. No, no idea. Or maybe they tangentially know that it's running. Right, yeah. They probably know that it's using Proton. That's probably the the, the most they know. And, I mean, and and that, I think, is going to have or is having a huge influence on, especially when it comes to indie developers, um, like the development community. Because now you want your game to run on Proton. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the topic that I was going to discuss this episode in our game dev update, um, the uh, the game that I'm working on now, which is based on the AI question that we asked in the last episode, and, <laughs> right, and yep. Chat GPT helped us uh, come up with a game. I'm trying to make that game now, and I want to make it specifically for 
the Steam Deck. I want to make sure, which I know that if I make it mm. for Linux, it will run on the Steam Deck, no problem. Right. But like, I'm even considering what buttons the Steam Deck has, yep. the screen resolution that's on the yep. Steam Deck. Like, I'm trying to like really tailor it for. You're just the targeting Steam Deck. it. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I think that's an amazing idea. And um, so uh, so yeah, I think that there is uh, a lot of uh, a lot of really good pull, I, I, dude. When it comes to Linux gaming, Valve has been the biggest contributor in yeah. a very long time. And yeah, I mean, if we if we lose Valve ever, like for any reason at yeah, all, it's it's going to be never yeah. Happen. No, and I'm just saying, if if it if it did happen, if yeah. very big if, it would be a sad day for Linux gaming. It could happen. I'm being facetious. It could happen. I don't know. I doubt it though. I highly doubt it. No, I, I highly <laughs> doubt because there's so much success that it's yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like if it they, wasn't for the Steam Deck, I would I would say a little bit more of a eh, maybe it could happen. Yeah. But the Steam Deck now is just going full force. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and I think it's somehow personal to Gabe too. I think he just wants to see. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. He just he, he just doesn't want Windows to be the only platform and have them control everything. Like that's yeah. that was I mean, his if whole you think thing. About it, if you think about it, the way they have their cake and eat it too. Like they they have everything fully supported on Linux, yep. and there's this like huge contributor com, contributor to the Linux community. But it also only makes their Windows like it, you know their games run on Windows, and mm-hmm. you can install Steam on Windows. And yep. you don't even need Proton. Like yep. it, they have, they have the best of both worlds. <laughs> yep, yep. It's it, they have no benefit to just like making things work better on Windows because guess what? Game developers will already do that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they don't yep, need, exactly. They don't need Gabe Newell to do that. <laughs> the work is done there. <laughs> um, we neither one of us has played uh, Tears of the Kingdom yet. Uh, nope. It looks really cool. I've been watching and listening to a lot of people who are playing the game. I want to buy it, but both you and I are cheapskates when it comes to buying games. And uh, yes, <laughs> it's like 70 bucks, but it seems like it's a really good game. And I think I, so I've talked about before how I got my son a switch and he wouldn't play it. He has just now been struck with what, like he wants to play it. He's getting emotionally invested in it when he's playing. He gets angry mm-hmm. whenever mm-hmm. things mess up. And <laughs> he's like just now for the first time getting into it. And um, right now he's playing Luigi's Mansion 3. And he is so into it. And he can't <laughs> kill awesome, the ghost. Yeah. The game's kind of complicated actually for kids because you have this whole combo you have to do. Um, it, it never changes. So in that way, it's easy. But it's like you first you have to flash the ghost with a flashlight. Yep, and then it stuns them, and then you start yep. sucking them up with a vacuum, and then once mm-hmm. you have them sucked up with a vacuum, then you start beating them with a vacuum <laughs> until they. Die. Oh, so that that's different. Okay. <laughs> well, you like you, you like once you suck them up, then you're like attached to the vacuum, and you like sling them onto the ground. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. And he can't do that part yet, so he he wanders around the mansion. And he'll go room to room. And then whenever he gets it goes, he's like, daddy, daddy, daddy. <laughs> I have to run in there and get it and then do the ghost. Um, and uh, it's an interesting game because it's basically like a, uh, you know, it feels like a survival horror for kids. It's like you're yep, ex- exploring yep. this place, finding keys and clues and stuff. Um, I just I th- recently played through the first Luigi's Mansion. Really? That's yeah, funny. like probably probably about two months ago now. That's funny. I've never played it. I never played any of them. Oh until man, this it's one. one of it's one of my favorite like Mario games, and I know that's probably controversial, but <laughs> <laughs> so it's they, definitely one of my favorites. They have a like a full size arcade version of it at the David really? Buster's near our house. Interesting. And we've played it several times, but the first time we played it, we were like, "What the heck are we supposed to do?" We didn't know about the <laughs> flashlight and the sucking it up thing, and and so he had been watching it on his tablet. He'd been watching people play it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I got it for him for his birthday, and he's loving it. But he enjoys watching me play games now where he didn't before. But that all started mm. with Luigi's Mansion because he would watch me go to the mansion. And uh, so I think if I got Tears of the Kingdom, he might would watch me play it. He couldn't play it, but he yeah. could, but he might enjoy watching that, me play it. That one's slightly more complicated. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> and when yeah. I say slightly, I mean very much more I complicated. Even, I don't even think he could run around in a 3D space. Like, Luigi's Mansion is, like, really a 2D game with some 3D depth. I don't. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't saying, think yep. he could control an actual 3D character yet. 
Um, but it is so funny. I can see, like, I remember my mom getting mad at me for like, uh, getting too emotionally invested in the game and being upset <laughs> whenever I, I lost And Like, yep. I hear my wife doing that to him now and it's just funny. I wanted him to get into gaming so bad. And then now it's going to be like, that's all he does. And we're going to be like, go outside. <laughs> <laughs> screen time, man. Screen time. <laughs> oh, so how was your game development week? Did you get anything done this week? <laughs> like I said, other than uh, my notes that I've been taking and, and trying to, you know, figure out the best way to make um, RPG maker uh, MV work. Other than that, no, I haven't really done anything. Um, so, like, I just been I've been watching so many videos on it, and I've come to the conclusion that the best way and the only way to make a unique game with it is to use what's called parallax mapping. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Which it, it's basically like you take your map, either you create a, a map in RPG Maker and export it. Or you create one in like GIMP, for instance, or Photoshop, and then you actually like map out on there like your your shading and all that stuff and your boundaries and whatnot, and then re-import it back into RPG Maker. And I think you have to use a, as far as I know, a plugin for to do this. And then once you do that, you can you can basically have your set your boundaries in RPG Maker. I think I think I have that correct. I don't. It's it's very confusing, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to even actually figure it out, to be honest, but it makes your game look a thousand times better. It makes collisions with, with objects way better. Like, you can do precise, like, like let's say you want a jagged mountain. Well, in RPG Maker, you can't really do that, but right. with this, you can actually, like, go into the crevices of the mountain and whatnot and, like, you know, actually get right up onto it. Which, um, I mean, it makes the games like amazing, like a thousand, literally, I'm not even exaggerating, a thousand times better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, when I was looking into RPG Maker, um, I also looked into that because the, the, the aspect of RPG Maker that I think that I could get into is the pixel art and the drawing of the assets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, what I looked into was, well, how could I just draw the scene myself? Um, right. And then uh, and I wish I could do that, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the parallax mapping was one of the things that came up. I never did actually right. learn how to do it though, so I can't can't tell you what you are. And it are looks not doing, if right? if you know anything about like Photoshop or GIMP or even art in general, I feel like you'd be really easily able to do this. <laughs> it looks pretty simple once you know. I mean, obviously you got to learn the the tool. If you don't know the tool, you got to learn the tool and then be able to do this. But um, it doesn't look that hard if you really know how to do it and are an artist. <laughs> hmm. um, well, that's cool. So what uh, what do you work? You're just still trying to sort of uh, learn the concepts and not necessarily making a specific game yet? To be honest, yeah, that's really what's going on. I'm really trying to nail down how to use this software <laughs> in general. Yeah. Um, and I just haven't had the time. I mean, it works, you know, work's been killing me and like I've been coming home and working on my server stuff, which is to me more important than this for now. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear that. I hear that. I wanted to do game stuff this weekend and then what my, my whole thing is, so I, I mentioned the two cars that I have. Neither one of them were, was a truck. And um, whenever I have a chance to borrow a truck, uh, I'm like, I've got like a laundry list of things that I like need to get done. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, well, we can go take that off to the dump. We can go buy that thing and bring <laughs> it to the house and we can go do. And, and so like I was doing that this yep. weekend. My father-in-law was out of town. And so we were like, let's, let's drive the truck for the weekend. Um, I think <laughs> Ooh, that, we got a truck, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, if I were making, if I were trying to do this, I would draw out everything in RPG maker with the tile set that they give you, but, mm -hmm. but then export that as a PNG. I think that's what you need to do. You export yep. it as a PNG and then you take that into Photoshop and touch it up and redraw it. But, but then I think there's a way that you can then take that at the, at the bottom most layer and somehow yep. import that as your tile set on screen. I don't know yeah. how you do that part. Yeah. Cause it's all, it's all based on images. So mm -hmm. like, when you when you import a, the image that you export out of Photoshop or whatever, it's basically just a flat image that is given um, given I don't know how the, how you'd say it, but given like different attributes in different areas to allow and disallow 
like people to travel through it. Right, right. So the next layer up would be things that you say, okay, the tops of trees, the the yep. tip tops of buildings, yep. or like something that you want to overlay on something else, but maybe you don't want someone to walk through. Right. And, and, you, and yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that it allows you to do, which is what I really want it for, is it allows you to use any amount of tile sets that you oh, yeah, want. Because you could just import it into Because you can Photoshop just do whatever, whatever. you want. Yeah. Yep. And it, with RPG Maker, you get one, two, three, maybe like six or, or seven yeah. a, a tile sets. And like, if you really want a vast, like, area of things <laughs> you don't really get that with rpg maker i could make i could get back into rpg maker games it's just i feel like and maybe this is my like mm -hmm. i could finish an rpg maker game i know that process beginning to end for the most part right because but honestly because it hasn't changed much since i was since I was a teenager, and I yeah, did. and you said you used to mess around with it all the time. Yeah, when I was when I was a kid, I used to try to remake movies that I liked in RPG Maker, um, and uh, and I just did it for fun. They were they were awful. I, you know, you would never posted <laughs> on Steam or anything like that. I'm not saying I could make start to finish a good RPG Maker game, <laughs> right? But you could actually finish one that actually it. worked. But my thing is, is I feel like the game ideas I have don't lend themselves to that type of game. I think a good right. RPG maker game has to be like this long Brandon Sanderson epic. You know what I mean? Like it has to be <laughs> like with like all these characters and this like saga. Whereas like yep. I come up with kind of like short, silly ideas and then, or a lot of modern concepts that would have to take right. place in a modern world. And I don't, and I know that there are RPG maker games that take place in a modern world. I don't necessarily know that the tool lends itself the best for that type of, that type of thing. I don't know. I, and that's, hmm. and I'm asking, that's a good point because maybe, you know, the, maybe the concept that I'm working on right now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it should be uh, this style game. Um, but I just, and also for my, for the first game that I actually finally finished, because I've never finished one, um, it needs to be short because I got to get all the way through it. And I feel yeah, like right, it, right. And, and I feel like if I make an RPG Maker game, it's got to be long. I just I don't think yep. I can. I don't think it would be good to have a short. Yeah, I mean, I I, I get that. I get that because like I I bought two RPG Maker base games out of Steam, and they're both exactly what you described: long, many characters, a crazy story. You know. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. And like, and personally, that's what I would love to make. I would love to make a game just like that. And that's why I kind of got, wanted to get into the RPG maker side of things. Yeah. I feel like we're so close. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we need, I, <laughs> if you can handle the story, I could work on the art. We could, we, we should try to think about it that way. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. That, that's <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this um so let me tell you what I did. So last week we did the chat GPT help us write a game thing. Yep, right, right. And um and so we came up with the concept of it called it uh oh yeah, I figured out chat GPT totally plagiarized the name. Um, <laughs> of course, of course it did. <laughs> it called it um like ascent uh I might have to open chat GPT to see what it even called it. <laughs> um, but what it called it actually was not a game. There's not a game by that name, but right. there was a, um, there, there, it is a, um, a dungeon in a game. Oh, uh, it's, it's like a, uh, cause I Googled it to see, cause it was such a, it was such a good abyssal gate. Yeah. Abyssal gate. Abyssal yeah. gate. And it's like a, uh, it's like a, it's like a instance in, um, in, uh, one of those FPS, uh, uh, MMOs. I can't remember the name. Um, so we can't use that name. I can't. I can't come up with a better name. When 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 comes the point where there's no names left? <laughs> there's nothing left. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you could use the name Abyssal Gate, although it's probably copyrighted by the company. That's um, the thing. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. But uh, so I've been toying with other names. I can't come up with anything. But the reason it called it Abyssal Gate was because the game was derived from. Uh, Hellmouth by Giles Christian, and um, it's about you know a a gate that goes into some otherworldly abyss, and so that's why I call it. That. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, well, you could call it like Deep Abyss, but then that's kind of like 
both words kind of have a similar meaning. Like, why would it be both yeah. deep and an abyss? Uh, wouldn't it? It wouldn't an abyss imply that it was deep? Um, so I, obsidian so I, abyss, <laughs> obsidian <laughs> abyss. But then how's it? Oh, is it because it's like dark? It's like black yeah. abyss. Ah, that's not bad. Abyss. To be honest, obsidian. I've been using obsidian notes, so deep obsidian. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Anyway, <laughs> so so the whole concept just as a quick like quick re like it was a, about the concept that ChatGPT came up with was that the player would go to some town that like weird stuff is happening in the town. Eventually, he finds out that it all is coming from this well at the center of the town, and the player would have to descend into the well which would descend into madness um, where you would have to like fight, like morphed and, and uh, you know, ma- like manipulated uh, townspeople um, until you finally got to uh, where you found out that there was like this powerful demon Lord that had like cursed the town and all this. So that's what abyssal gate was uh, based on chat GPT. Now the problems with this is that, and and I think this is an interesting conversation because last week we were talking about how like AI was going to change like the gaming industry yeah. and all this. So the problems with this is one, Abyssal Gate probably copyrighted. It's in another game. Two, right. it's really, really, really similar to Giles Christian's novel Hell Mouth. Yeah. I said write Way me something. Similar. Right. I said write me something inspired by. It's damn near the same. <laughs> I mean, it is different and it's probably like you could, you could tell a different enough story that it's, that it's not copyright infringing, but it's really similar. Um, yeah. and I, and I think that's what a lot of this chat GPT stuff came out to be for me was like, it's probably skirting copyright laws, but just as a product that someone is going to buy, I doubt they would buy this over the original because it's way too similar. It's not fresh. Yep. It's not new. No. Um, so I started thinking, well, how could I take what chat GPT gave me and try to make something fresh out of it? Hmm. And, and also I'm trying to make the game simple and I'm trying to make it something that, that I can, that I can make. And I'm right. not a 3d modeler. I don't know how to make 3d models, um, which maybe is another argument that I should be using RPG maker and not uh, unity in the first place. But um, I, I decided what if this town that, you know, one, you could make it in modern times. There's no reason this should be a fantasy story based on everything chat GPT right. gave us. You could show up at any town anywhere yep. and the people are acting strange. You find out it's got to do with the water supply. Turns out it's a gate into hell. Boom. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't have to be fantasy. Um, if it is fantasy, I, an art style that I think I could do in a 3d world would be uh, sort of like, um, sort of like doom mapping. Okay. Um, where you have like kind of a uh, low resolution textures that are kind of blown up. So they're a little pixelated, but you could have a lot of atmospheric mm-hmm. lighting and unity. Yeah. You, you could right. use unity to do modern lighting and, uh, you know, mood setting hmm. while also using kind of pixelated and, uh, uh, like low poly graphic style because, because like I said, I can't do, the really modern stuff. I could go to the unity asset store and buy a highly, uh, you know, highly polished 3d model of a medieval village. And I could tell my story in that model. And I'm not criticizing people that do that. You, you, I, I don't think there's any shame on you to do that, but I don't think, I think it would be the same problem that chat GPT had where it's just like, it would be too similar to other games made mm-hmm. in that way. It wouldn't be yep. unique in any way. And so yep. I don't want to do that. I want to I want to try to make something myself and I can't make highly detailed stuff cuz I'm not skilled enough. So I'm going to try to make very artistic stylized low poly versions of these things. And um also, I know that I can build the environments, but I'm going to struggle building the characters. I can apply new animations, but I'm going to struggle actually making animations. And so I found a character model that I'm not going to use for a main character, but I'm going to use it. And it's, it's, it's something that I can vary by changing the clothes mm-hmm. and changing what the character's doing to, to make them all different. I think my village people are going to be skeletons. They're all going to be mm. skeletons. And okay. I think that they are going to have a forgotten history. These are skeletons that used to be humans that have no recollection of ever being around humans or being humans. They've always been skeletons and they don't, and there's, 
an assumption hmm. as to why they are able to move and they don't need to eat and all this kind of stuff, but they don't really right. know. It's all lost to history. They don't remember what happened. And I'm thinking that going back to the chat GBT story, it could be related to the curse, you know, that's, okay. that's placed on the town. Right, and, right. Um, the, the player character, which I've not decided, it should not be a skeleton. I don't know what it should be, but it should not be a skeleton. And they should show up to this town and they realize that like, okay, everybody in the town is a skeleton and they don't really, they don't, it's not strange to them. They <laughs> they think this is normal. Um, and I even thought it would be interesting. Maybe there's a cult in the town of, of these skinnies that basically like they have this, they have this like wacko forgotten lore that they used to have skin. And so they walk around like covering themselves uh, mm-hmm. trying to mimic mm-hmm. skin and everybody else in town is like, Oh yeah, they're nuts. They, they think they used to be covered in flesh and skin. And like, you know, we all know they're crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. I kind of like that. <laughs> and, and, and then that spawned the idea of, you know, chat GPT said that the townspeople were going to be like mutilated and coming out of the well as mutants what if they were coming out of the well as humans that it's we're not uh-huh. it's it's that the so the, in the world in this world humans are the weirdos <laughs> and and the curse maybe is being lifted or something so like it's huh. it's not that you know in chad gpt's version of the story it would be assumably it would be humans that are being mutated into these weird monsters and then you have to fight the monsters to eventually you know end the curse yeah in, right right in this version the skeletons don't ever remember being human and it's that the curse is slowly being lifted and they're being turned back into humans. But to them, the humans are monsters because huh. they've, they've never seen right. them before. Right. Cause it's been so long since they've, yeah, since they've, yeah. yeah. Interesting. And huh. I think my main character should be first person. Mm-hmm. And I think there should be some question as to what they are. Hmm. I think through the game, you should have to, Kind of based on the way the other characters interact with you, you should have some question as to whether you're a skeleton, a human, or something else. And and then mm. and that would be some plot device. And I haven't figured that out yet, but that would be some plot device later on in the story. And like and like somehow somehow in this world there's like no mirrors or anything you can see yourself <laughs> yeah, with. No like right, like there's yeah. no reflections, there's no water reflections or something. Something something yeah. to that effect there's got to be. So you actually don't know who you well, are. Well, the character's wearing a helmet, you know? Like it could just be that they're in armor. and they and Yeah, something. It, and it may not be that they don't know, it's just that they didn't say. And so like as a uh, okay, as the player, okay. you don't have that you. knowledge, but the character could have it. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm gotcha. kind of trying to do this sort of like fish out of water thing that Stray was, where like mm. you played as the cat, but really the cat's knowledge was inconsequential. The, the, the player was what was... The cat really had no motivation to do anything in the game. It's just right. that we, the player, had the motivation and we were controlling the cat, you know? Yep. And yep. so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of do a similar thing to that. And then also like Stray... Um, you know, he enters this world where there's this like crazy forgotten history and these people that are like, you know, in this whole new society. Um, and, um, and so it's similar in that way too. Um, but it's also like, it's not, it's not even really, in, I guess it's inspired by stray. It's inspired by the stray to- storytelling style. Um, right. But right. It's also yep. a completely different thing, you know? Um, the only dilemma with my game is I don't know how you should feel about killing the, the, the mutants, you know, if, if, the, right. if the mutants are really just skeletons that are slowly being turned back into people, <laughs> 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 should you really be killing them throughout the game? And is that like a, it's an interesting conundrum. So yes, you should put it in the game. Or is it like a, oh, it's going to feel bad when I get to the end of the game and, and figure that out? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. So this is where this is where I'm thinking that, you know, the, the great thing about AI is that it started this whole process. Right. Yeah. It's good at starting, like, getting your mind thinking about things. Yeah. But if, but if I had just taken what it said... And then tried to make that game. I could have yeah. done it, and it wouldn't yep. have been plagiarism, but it wouldn't have been interesting either. Right, um, right. 
So that's why they still need creative people, even in the AI, even in a world where AI is yep. running the industry. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, right. But so, yeah, so that was my game div week, kind of two weeks. Um, and I didn't really make any progress on actually making anything, sort of conceptual mm. stuff. Um, Same here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We're, all, we're in the concept phase. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you think that idea could work in an RPG Maker game? I mean... Okay, so the thing is, the thing is, an RPG Maker game with that kind of a, a thing is is not going to be like horror, you know? Like, it's yeah. not going to be scary, whatever right, you want right. to call it. Yeah. Because I, there's no way you can make it scary in this day and age. I actually think the skeleton thing is kind of lifting me out of the horror thing because... Okay. Because it's kind of common. You just want it to be like like an out of body experience. <laughs> you yeah. know. Not it's, to not to use the word um, play, but <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's really good. Um no, I think because before I was thinking, when I taught a chat GPT, I literally said, Make me a resident evil, but in the style of Giles Christian. I mean, that was like what ah. started the whole conversation. And mm-hmm. so it was supposed to be survival horror. Um, I think that for one thing, the type of survival horror game I was trying to make before we mm-hmm. talked to chat GPT was too similar to what other indie game developers are making. Yeah. It's, it, there's so much out there. It's so hard to make your own unique thing. Yeah, anymore. I mean, how many times do you make a survival horror game in like a spooky mansion or police station and you find keys and kill zombies? Like, you know, like how many times can you do that and it still be interesting? Yeah. There's a whole... There, there's a whole cottage industry in a, industry of people that love those types of games. I'm mm-hmm. one of those people, but I really want to make something that tells like a, that's a little that tells a little bit more of a unique story than that. And I think the skeleton thing is meant to be a little whimsy, like it's a little more yeah. comical than it is scary. Um, but it's still kind of an yeah. eerie element to it, right? Um, and I, I, I think I think if you're not gonna go for the horror side yeah. of it and like eerie kind of stuff i think you could probably do it in rpg maker no problem at all but in rpg especially maker, if i couldn't play on the first person thing though that is the only problem you'd have to know who the character was and everything about it basically or it'd be in a suit you or wouldn't something. have to you could do like the suit of armor thing like you yeah, were saying like they could be an armor it doesn't have to be a an actual person yeah hey if you get like in depth with like this parallax mapping stuff and and like all this kind of weird stuff that they do on the side and then import it into rpg maker you can do you can do quite a bit i've been diving in the rabbit hole of this whole thing and like 80 percent of like rpg maker stuff is done outside of rpg maker and then the last 20 percent is done you know like the like the um the dialogue and the and the different like you know fighting styles and all that kind of stuff is all done in there but the like actual like designing everything is pretty much done outside at this point because th- there's more advanced tools yeah the other thing is the combat so in my game i'm trying yeah. to do like a uh I'm trying to kind of do like a low poly oblivion style combat which i guess oblivion is kind of low poly at this point <laughs> <laughs> at this point yeah um but like i'm trying to do like that kind of like your first person melee kind of stuff yeah and see and that's and that's kind of i R- mean rpg so maker you, you, you got to do the rpg maker thing where it's you, know. you can do first person though mm-hmm. you can do that because you can you can have your when you when you get into a battle you can um do the first person where you are looking at the enemies and you don't see yourself mm-hmm. you can do that or you can do the third person where you see you you know you're on the right they're on the left kind of situation you know that kind of stuff hmm. um but it, it's it would be it would definitely be harder i feel to do it in rpg maker and make it the way you want it yeah yeah like yeah. i like you could do it 100 percent. you could do it no problem at all but it wouldn't be what you envision it to be i think making from it what i'm getting RPG, is a jrpg instead of a first person yeah i think um i think i'm probably gonna right now my plan is to stick to the first person thing i'm gonna learn how to make the environments in blender and um and then what's not part of the environment i'll probably find a low poly asset and change the skin yeah really. it's just time it just takes time it really does and uh, i'm learning that the hard way <laughs> <laughs> all right um i'll keep working on it we'll give a we'll give an update every once in a while maybe not every week. yeah i really got to start actually working on something like I'm, I'm sick and tired of just looking at these videos and being like man that looks cool i'll get to it eventually <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's I mean, think about let's try to think about coming up with a uh, 
with some sort of epic fantasy that we can make in RPG Maker, and that'll be a different project. Okay. I want this to be short too. I don't want this to be like a super long, like not even six hour game. Like I want this to be pretty quick. Yeah. But I want to get all the way through the process so I can feel like I've actually made it through the made it through okay. the process. I mean, we can definitely probably make that happen. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's round this thing out and get together again next week. Um, thanks for listening. Join us on Discord and like and subscribe to the video. If you've made it this far, then you probably are, you're a real one. You are probably are subscribed. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Peace. <laughs>